I bet they don't share the same pension pot. What does he earn in his own country? <laughs> it's not just his eyesight that's impaired, so is his thinking. <laughs> Idiot. He has zero experience. Today, we're gonna to be reacting to the Daily Mail hate comments. If you guys didn't know already, Daily Mail, let's just say the IQ of the average Daily Mail reader is, um, is subpar. Welcome back to the channel guys, my name is Devify and today I have a very exciting video for you guys. A few months ago, I thought let's just reveal to the public how poorly paid doctors are in the UK. I opened up TikTok, made a quick little video with my pay slip in the background. Next thing you know, within one day, I had one million views. Within two days, I had about 1.5, 1.7. Within day three, I was not on one, not two, not three, but four newspaper articles. Today, we're gonna to be reacting to the Daily Mail hate comments. Pull the other one, doc. You are fooling no one. 46 likes, not another lying doctor. 52 likes. Sure, doctor, we believe you. 38 likes, he's lying. 27 likes. Do you guys even know what a payslip is? <laughs> my degree is a waste of time, my registration is a waste of time. Clearly I'm not a doctor, lies. I've got nothing better to do than concoct up BS. <laughs> Junior doctor telling me what goes on? You're the tea boy, learn your trade. Regardless about the experience, we see the amount of responsibility that doctors have. As a newly qualified, I'm looking after 280 patients. That's some crazy stuff right there. In my second day of the job, I was holding a crash bleep. Me jumping on patient's heart, trying to restart it, doing CPR, I'm the tea boy. Me assessing whether a patient has got a heart attack, doing the full clinical assessment, prescribing medication and treating that heart attack, I'm the tea boy. Me calling up someone who has just passed away, their, their daughter, telling them that I'm sorry, your mum just passed away unexpectedly right now at 3am. Well, I hope this guy never turns up in my surgery when he's fully trained. Yes, fully trained Mr. Gakkar. <laughs> The part that excites me most about this comment was that he actually spelt my name correctly. G-A-K-H-A-R because no one spells it correctly. What does he earn in his own country? Oh sorry, what does B earn in his own country? In my own country I do earn £15 per hour as a doctor. It says you're a fresh grad working under constant supervision. In time you'll be paid based on experience and indispensability. In 2008, about 15 years ago, newly qualified doctors in this very country under the NHS, they were paid 30% higher in real terms. And since then we've received 0% pay rises, sometimes 1%, 2%. And so in real terms, the pay has actually gone down. And it's even more worse for consultant doctors. They've lost 30, 40% of their pay. And we're not working any less hard than we were back then. In fact, things are even more tough. And you're gonna say, well, you weren't working 15 years ago. I wasn't, but so many other doctors were. And essentially, even though over the 15 years they're doing more work, their take home in real terms is basically the same. And that's not right. The second part of that though, is you're working under constant supervision. So this isn't actually true. During the day, yes, we do work in tandem with the consultant and follow the plan. But throughout the rest of the day, we're not, no one's supervising us. We're all junior doctors on the ward um, and obviously the other healthcare staff, but the consultant's not on the ward. It's the juniors doing everything, um, all the day-to-day -day stuff. And then once we go out to hours, so after 5 p.m. nights and weekends, we don't have any consultant supervision. In fact, I, as a newly qualified doctor, I'm actually looking after nine wards in my hospital and that works out to about 280 patients. And so if there's any concern, any deterioration in a patient, they call me and I have to address it and go there and review that patient. And if they're really unwell or if I need advice, well, I have someone I can call. And do you know who that person is? Another junior doctor, just a more senior one than me, maybe three, four years down the line. And that's not even the most senior of junior doctors. 99% of the stuff that we would do is not gonna be signed off by a consultant. So that support, and supervision is there if I need it and I actually call. It's not there at all times. Obviously we got the classic one, so they knew the pay and structure before even going to uni. But the thing is, no we didn't because a lot's actually changed in these 10 years. So when I applied to med school, it wasn't just, well I started in 2017, but my application to med school started many years before that. We're talking in GCSEs because med students have to do a lot of extra stuff like volunteering, working in the, with new care homes. 
it's been about a decade since I started looking into applying to med school and building my application. As smart as doctors are, we're not fortune tellers. We can't predict, you know, sub-inflationary pay rises of 0%, 1%, and things have changed. We used to say that, oh, doctors will never not have a job, but now loads of doctors are going unemployed because of training bottlenecks. So the government is pumping out loads of med students, but then there's no job posts. They're not increasing the specialty training posts. Competition is like, let's say, dermatology is eight in one. Radiology was like nine in one. Internal medical training, which is basically the gateway into all medical specialties, even that, I think this year was four to one, and that should be a guaranteed entry. And loads of doctors are actually going unemployed or having to pick up spare jobs until they can get into the specialty training program and become a consultant and so you know that 15 16 years is becoming 17 18 19 years to get to consultancy now you guys are probably wondering wow so much hate comments that must generate a lot of stress added to the fact that you're working as a doctor you're doing the social media stuff you must be quite stressed and you're right you know there's a fair bit of stress but i do have something that helps me out you guessed it it's magic my chat about them basically every video they're a long-term part of the channel using this helps me focus keeps my energy throughout the day whenever i have a driving lesson i give myself a little shot of this and my concentration i'm not gonna lie has been on point it's got all these high quality nootropics which i'm sure you guys know about it's got ashwagandha it's got lion's mane mushroom it's got echinacea it's got vitamin c vitamin d a little bit of caffeine too and it is amazing and it really helps you cut down your caffeine intake as well so i've been using this for more than six months now but the craziest thing about magic mind is that your boy has got you guys a 20 percent off discount code if you don't like it you don't want to be energized you don't want to be rejuvenated and focused that's fine just ask for a refund and it's a hundred percent refund guaranteed just do your apprenticeship you spanner you're paid on experience and time in service not just for turning up with a degree lord give me strength Monty. <laughs> Funny kind of apprenticeship where the apprentice looks after 280 patients on a night shift on his own. <laughs> yeah. He's earning a good salary already despite being a trainee and will earn a lot more when fully qualified. Like most doctors though, he believes the world owes him and his only job in the world for the money and the huge benefits. What money and benefits? Your boy's on like a few pounds more than minimum wage. There are so many careers out there where if you want money, you can make it much faster and in a much easier way than doing medicine. You're a junior doctor, zero experience, hence the pay. So this is a massive misconception to a lot of people. The name junior doctor was actually derived to belittle doctors and justify poor pay because it implies that the person isn't fully qualified, doesn't have much experience. Another term they tend to use is doctors in training and sometimes they say trainee medics. Junior doctor is actually a fully qualified doctor who's completed medical school. It can be anyone who is just in their first year after qualifying like me, but it can also be someone who's 10, 11, 12 years into the field. It is anyone who's not a consultant or a GP. And as I said, there's a lot of training bottlenecks. And so people are junior doctors for a very long time and may never even become a consultant or a GP. And so the term junior doctor doesn't always mean that the person has little experience. Clearly chosen the wrong career. And it's funny because um, I think it's what, 98% of junior doctors voted yes to strike, even the consultants. I think it was like 85% of the consultants are striking too. The whole profession chose the wrong profession. I wonder if he's ever taken into account how much it's costing to train him. And the comment underneath says, he's got a pretty huge student loan to pay off, so I suspect he has some idea. Yeah, so actually I have about 85,000 pounds in student loans, and I know that medicine as a degree is slightly subsidized by the taxpayer, as all other degrees are. I know that medicine is obviously a bit more, but if you think about it, with interest, doctors will actually end up paying back about 250K back into the system. So we're more than well enough you know, pay off the training. Just because he can pass exams, they could find he has no people's skills and doesn't work very hard. Hence, he has to start on basic pay until his next review. <laughs> During med school, I'd say maybe three out of five years minimum is spent on the wards where you're interacting with patients, taking histories, exams, doing procedures, things like that. Um, so you've already done years of that. In fact, nowadays, a lot of med schools have increased that. And so you're doing it even more. In fact, med school is way more practical than it is theory. Oh dear, so sad, makes me want to cry, haha. -ha. You should try working 12 hour shifts or 14 hour shifts at my local pub where I live. I've done both and I know pouring pints at the pub is, 
it can be stressful when there's loads of like you know people coming around but it's no way as stressful compared to people dying literally and you have to go sort that out